Let's start with use dependent practice. The learning method for use dependent practice is repetition. The motor system changes through this repetition and causes neuroplasticity of the motor cortex. I think that probably this is the learning method that we use the most, if not exclusively, for our patients. Uh, there must be active engagement in the task. The neural substrate, or the part of the brain that really drives this learning, is the motor cortex and the spinal cord. Examples in the therapy world are constraint-induced movement theory, therapy, where we restrain one arm and really drive with thousands of repetitions activities with the more affected upper extremity. But anybody who's ever played a sport uh, a sport or played a musical instrument and become proficient knows how many repetitions it takes for use-dependent learning. So this is a little review. Use-dependent learning uses repetition. It uses the motor cortex as its neural substrate. Conscious awareness is necessary. So there, it's going to be least effective with some diagnosis. For instance, if someone has a complete spinal cord injury, they're just not going to have the, the nervous system to be able to do repetition of things. Uh, also, advanced ALS or lesions of the brain that are really super affecting the motor cortex, they're just not going to be do, able to do it because they don't have the resources. Don't be confused, however, with hemiplegia because you'll say, well, hemiplegia affects the, the, motor, the, neuro, the motor system, the motor cortex, and so we probably shouldn't use it with uh, hemiplegia, but hemiplegia still has motor cortex resources. Just because one part of it is damaged doesn't mean that it's wiped out. So what we're doing in use-dependent practice is we're just trying we're trying to get to the area of the motor cortex that we still have, and the same thing with incomplete spinal cord. 